Okay, guys, new semester, new beginnings. Are we excited? Yeah. Yeah. Good. <laughs> so last semester, we focused mostly on mitzvot ben adam le makom, which means between us and God. God. This semester, we're going to go in detail on the other side of Jewish life, which is ben adam le Adam or Chaveiro is how we refer to it as, okay, Chaveiro. And that's actually a very good word. The word Chaver is a friend. friend. What other word do we see in the word Chaver? That's Chet Bej Resh. So this is Chaver. What other word can you see which is connected to this word, Chaver? Chet Bej Resh. Which is what? That's Iver. Yeah, Laris, okay. Um, chibur connection. Chibur is a connection. Very, very good. Chibur is a connection. So a chaver is not just a friend. We're trying to make connections. As we mentioned last semester, everything we do with Judaism is basically making connection one of three ways. Between us and God, between us and each other, and between us and ourselves. Ben Adam la makom, ben Adam la chavero, ben Adam la atzmo. So what we're looking at this semester is Ben Adam Lechaveiro. That's going to be the topic running right through this entire semester of our 26 class we'll be doing. So let's begin. Turn to page three. We're going to start with the Pesukim, the verses in the Torah. And a lot of the verses we're going to look at, actually there aren't that many of them, but we're going to learn a lot out from a few verses. They are all in the book of Leviticus, also known as Vayikra. That's great. Vayikra. I don't know which parsha we're going to be looking at. Chapter 19, interestingly enough, takes us into a parsha. Does anyone know which parsha, which portion within Vayikra we're going to be looking at for the most part? It's actually the Torah portion of Kadoshim. What does Kadoshim mean? Kadosh, holy. What does what Kadosh also mean? To separate, distinct, apart, very good. Okay? It can't be a coincidence that many of the mitzvot that we have, which are Bain Adam Lachavero, are found in the Torah portion of Kadoshim, how to be holy. Right? Emily, that cannot be a coincidence. It's got to be for a reason. And we're going to see why. Because holiness isn't just based upon how we relate to God, it's also how we relate to each other. Do you have a book, Rebecca? Okay, let's start with the verses, top of page three. Who wants to read? Leo, Levi, look at you. Okay, off you go. Um, you should not commit a Oh, we need the Hebrew as well as the English. Oh, no, I don't know that. <laughs> okay, do the English then. Oh, I can, maybe I can try like to low tasu. There you go. That's it. That's all I can do. <laughs> That's it. That's all I can do. <laughs> you know, Leo's done. Two words, I'm done. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. Lo tasu. I don't want to be here all day, so. I mean, you can do it. Don't worry. It's one verse. We have, we have all day. Lo tasu. I don't know what that is. Avel. Avel ba mishpat. What's an avel ba mishpat? Mishpat means like something. A judgment. A judgment. Justice. So, lot asu avav mishpat. Do not commit a distortion of justice. Then it says, lotisa pene dal. You should not. The word tisa pene dal literally means you should not lift up the face of a poor person. Okay, but we're going to understand it. Commentators understand it. I won't say allegorically, because I guess that is the analogy, but in reality, don't favor the poor people. Don't favor poor people, which is very weird, because aren't we meant to be good according to poor people in Judaism? No, it means don't favor, don't say, oh, the rich guy can pay, so we're going to favor the okay, poor. Okay, so let's have, we're going to get there. Right now, the verse doesn't seem to be that way, but you're right. We're going we're gonna to see that's what the Gemara is going to say, and the other Mephorashim. But John, on the, on, the, on the face of it, you get it? Face of it? 
Okay, it doesn't seem to say that. V'lo tedar p'nei gadol, and do not honor the p'nei of a gadol. Do not honor the great people. And then it says, B'tzedek tishbot amitecha. With righteousness, you should judge your fellow. So, on the face of it, excuse the pun, what are we talking about over there? What is this? What's happening? Where are we when this discussion is happening? Where are we? Yeah. Isn't it just basically talking about how to treat people of different statuses in society? So it seems to be how to treat people of different statuses in society. Right? That's what it seemed to be. However, the commentators give different interpretations to this. And one set of beliefs, welcome Jordan. I saw you sneaking over there. Come and pick a book, please. Oh, very good, great. So, lot asu of a mishpat, lot asu apne dal, lot asu apne gadol, but said tishpat mitecha, could be understood as you're in a court of law. What's happening in a court of law, Shani? What, what's the potential problem that can happen in a court of law? That the judge will favor someone over something. Like, he's not, he's not, he's not going to judge based on the evidence. That he's not going to judge based on the evidence. What's he going to judge on? Based on how the person is. Like, so we have two examples. The, two, the possible oh, two examples. Rich and poor. So give me an example of a poor person. A poor person is in court. A poor person is in court. Is in court. Give me the, a distortion of justice. An other mission of the poor person in court. How would that play out? He stole from the rich guy something. Okay. Poor person stole from the rich guy. Great. So, I mean, not great, but okay. you get the point. So the judge is saying, it's fine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that. The poor guy, the poor man is like, he's not guilty. Right. Because the rich, the rich guy can like, it's Exactly. Not... He's rich anyway. Exactly. He's rich anyway. You know what? The poor guy's got no money. What's the big deal? Let him take the money. Let him have it. The guy's got millions. This guy stole, all right, $100,000, but he's a poor guy. Let him have it. He's a poor guy. Never. Right? What did he say? No, you can't do that. No, there has to be a quality in law. What's the other way around? What's the other way around? Now you have a rich guy and a poor guy, and the rich guy stole from the poor guy. Lara, what's the story over there? Um, what's the potential problem? The potential problem is that you are favoring the rich person. Um, Why would I favor a rich person? He's because rich. Because sometimes somebody who has rich has stature, and sometimes he can pay bribes, and sometimes, especially in some countries, there is a really big connection between the very wealthy and the so it seems to be that we're nervous as well. The Torah is nervous that you may turn around and say, you know, this guy's a rich guy. We need to keep him on board. He gives millions of dollars to charity. He's very, very famous. So you're all going to do is, you know what, this poor guy, whatever. He's got no money. A lot less than no money. What's the big deal? Let him slide. Let the rich guy be honored. Let him have his money over here. Don't embarrass the guy in court. You know what I'm saying? He's a famous, uh, I don't know, football star, movie star, rich guy, business person, property owner. He gives so much to charity. Let him have what he wants, and we'll give the poor guy, and that's it, you know what? Chalas. You know, let him have it. He can't do that either. He can't favor poor people. He can't favor rich people. So when I'm in a court of law, which seemingly is where the verse is going, when it comes to judging people, that's the idea of tish I'm going to do it righteously. Okay. Let's have a look what the Gemara has to say about this. Note two on page three, all together. So yes, Rabbi? Yes, Rabbi. Fantastic. So the, the Gemara... Uh, note 2, is now going to quote the verse. And it's going to give us a couple of extra words which Rashi is going to have to extrapolate for us. Remember Rashi, Rav Shlomo Yitzchaki? This is the Gemara in Shavuot 30a. And the Gemara says, With righteous you should judge your friend. So it's it's kind of, the Gemara's clipped out that piece of the, of the verse. And then it says something very, very interesting that we're going to have to investigate. Have they done? You should done. You should judge. Et chavrecha your chaver lekaf zechut. Now, what does that mean? Lekaf zechut. Lekaf zechut. So, literally, what do the words mean? Lekaf. What's a kaf? Yes. 
Hi, it's part of my path for a spoon, right? Schut. What's schut? Merit. What's going on over there? Just a li- let's look at the literal words, and we'll see why that particular na- why that particular words were used. Why does he use those exact words? So lekav schut means you should show benefit of the doubt. Give benefit that you doubt something. You should you should judge your f- fellow favorably. Which is very different to what we're saying already. So you know you should actually judge people favorably. The kaf's chut seems like a scale. You know the scales you have, like even judgments they have in different places. Have like there's a scale and one scale and the other. You know. So if one side is going down a little bit over here, you got to push down the other side of the scale. You know, scales of justice. You know what I'm saying? You've got to judge. You've got to weigh things up. Now how to do that? We don't know. When to do it? We don't know. When we shouldn't do it? We don't know. That we haven't been told yet. That we're going to need the commentators are going to jump on it. But the premise is there. When it comes to judging other people, I mean, by the way, there's, there's an implicit question. Why doesn't you just say, don't judge people? Isn't, didn't your mothers tell you, don't judge for your friends? And yet it's telling you, when you judge people, right, you should do it favorably. Look, I've got given the, merit, given the benefit of the doubt. Really? Like, always? I'm always giving people the benefit of the doubt? Okay, so Rashi is going to jump in on this. And Rashi is going to give an explanation. Look on note three. And if you don't understand a Hebrew word, please write underneath these your books to write on. And if you like my daughters, you can do the designs down the side with your names in and hearts everywhere. My daughters, no, I said, you know what? If you're studying as good as your art, we're going to be rich. <laughs> okay. So Rashi, now what, so, the, so the Gemara clipped a bit of the Pasuk and, and gave its explanation of it. So Rashi's going to do the same thing. Rashi's going to clip the last part of the Gemara, Havidan et Chavrecha lekaf schut, and he's going to define those words. You should judge your Chavrecha lekaf schut on the side of merit. Says Rashi, V'lo bedin bale dinim hakatum bedaber. You see, this part of the verse actually is not talking about litigants in a court of law. Originally said the verse could be applied, but this part of the verse saying is actually not referring to that. The first part of the verse with the rich and the poor guy, that was. But now we've left the courtroom. You hear me, Shana? We've gone. We've left the courtroom. That's been done. And now we're out. We're out in the world. And it's saying there is a mitzvah from the Torah. This is Torah verses. This isn't nice, cutesy Judaism. This isn't NCSY, Shabbaton, and we're all like kumbayayim. This is what the Torah expects. Ella. When you see your friend, follow inside, don't have to look at me. O Sedavar, doing something, Sha'atayachol, that you are able, able, Sadavera, to decide on the side of that person having made a sin, Ulasad Schut, or you can judge that person. As doing something good. Judge that person towards the good and not to the bad. The al And don't be choshed, don't be suspect of this person having done a sin. What is Rashi talking about? Somebody please, Kayla Mogul. Where am I? Give me an example. Help the Jewish people over here, because I don't know what Rashi's talking about. He jumped from a court of law. He says, we're now judging people favorably. Suddenly we're seeing people, good, bad, choose good. What's he talking about? Maybe he's saying, like, in my opinion, I see it as him explaining that you shouldn't assume the worst from anyone. You shouldn't assume the worst from anyone. Give me an example. Where like, am I? Like, for example, what if you see a guy and... I don't know, he's... It's tricky, right? Yeah, he's doing something... <laughs> I'm trying to think. He's, he's screaming at another guy. Oh, okay. Being, like, super Let's evil. do that one. We see a person screaming at someone else being super evil. Beautifully yeah. put. Okay. And? What's and happening? you're, like... It's, in my opinion, I, like, I sadly do this all the time. I say, wow, this guy's such a jerk. What the heck is he doing? Like, why, why is he such doing that? Why is he shouting at yeah. that poor guy? But maybe the guy could have possibly, like, maybe behind the scenes, that guy might have, I'll go all out, embezzled money from the other guy, and he just found out. 
Like, okay. you know, something like you don't know. You've given an excellent example, Kelly. You said something very interesting. Let's pick examples. You judge the other person unfavorably in order to judge that person. Yeah. There's problems here. Yeah. There's big problems here. So we're basically seeing a scene. One second, Rebecca. We see a scene in front of us in life, which, by the way, we see all the time and everywhere. And in it, there's a guy who's doing something bad to another person. Shouting, screaming, hitting. And you see that little snapshot, mm -hmm. right? That little image that's in front of you. You came along and said, what you're expected to do, according to Rashi, is start to conjure up in your mind scenarios which may not be true. Right? Right? This is, Emily, she just made something up. You start to like embezzlement. Maybe this other guy's embezzled money from him. or be nasty to him. So what's happening between them is one thing. But now we've... This is very careful. This is very, very important. We're saying, how are you... Accept that information in your head. All right? How you allow that information to affect your head? What's happening between them? Between them? It has nothing to do with me. But I'm seeing it. Am I expected to create a scenario where actually this guy is not doing something bad? Is that what's expected of me? It's tricky, right? Yeah. How about this one, Larry? Larry, you're, you're nodding your head like, yeah, that's what's expected. Sounds like Rashi's saying. Let me give you another example, Larry. Ready for this one? This is a big one. Larry, you're walking down the street in Manhattan, and there's a bank, uh, the Chase Bank on 34th Street. You see someone screaming and running out the bank. Behind them, you see someone holding a gun with a mask over their face, carrying a bag with dollar bills flying out of it. <laughs> then you hear people screaming from inside the bank, thief, thief, stop. Then you see the guy get into a waiting car and on the side of the car it says, mafia, <laughs> and speed up. According to Rashi, are you expected to look at that and be like, let me tell you what happened. What happened was this guy went in to take some money. Oh, he's going to a costume party, right? <laughs> Dressed up with black and white stripes and a mask and a bag with swag written on it, right? And he went in and they stuffed the bag with cash because he actually is a big balsa duck. Let's give charity. And what happened was he was in a rush because his friend was there, also in the same party, dressed as the mafia. And while he was running out, the dollar bill was flying out. Right? It was a toy gun, obviously. And it was late for the party, and he had to give money, because, you know, Purim's coming. And people from the bank, right, were screaming, thief, thief, about someone else that was in the bank at that particular moment. Nothing to do with... Uh, actually, maybe they were just screaming, Keith, and you misheard it, this thief. And I'm like, this guy's a good guy. Let him go. Are you meant to do that? No. That you're not buying. That one you're not buying. But the first scenario that Kayla gave... You were like, well, when I see two people having a fight and they're arguing and shouting, what is the difference? I mean, is there a difference between the cases? Is that what Rashi expecting? No, but Rashi said, meaning that you can, I mean, here you have evidence, all the evidence that they are actually making. Uh, so, evidence that you have to try, you actually picked on some beautiful words. Shata yachol lachri. What's yachol? Can. If you can. Able. Yeah, able. able. Yacholiot. If you're able to do it. Maybe the robbing scenario I gave you, Lara, is not good because you got to go so far out in order to get that one into your brain as a possibility of judging this person favorably. And why, by the way, I've judged this person favorably, I never know yet. Why should I? We didn't discuss that yet. Who cares? You know what? He's a thief. That guy shouting, Kelly, the other guy, is not a nice guy. I hate him. What's wrong with that? I can't even do that. Why can't I do that? I'm not the one shouting and punching other people. I'll judge him negatively. What does Hashem care? There are bad people in the world, yes. So I'll judge him negatively. So who are we talking about? What the scenario is? And what are we able to do? But Shani hit a good one, Shani. Yachol. You've got to be able to do it. You've got to push yourself a little bit. But how far you push yourself, we've got to try to figure out. I want to say, 
I want to stop for one second. This is important. Everything we discussed in this semester, it's weird because we look at this kind of stuff. People say to me, you know, I've been in the semester, I hear this a lot. You know, Rabbi, this is all nice, but let's just learn real Judaism. Like last semester. Last semester we did kosher, we did Shabbat, we did mezuzah, we did belief in God, we did all the big stuff. This stuff, the same Torah that says don't eat a pig, the same Torah also says you should judge people favorably. Now we're gonna look at it that way. If you saw me eating a pig, like on the spit, you know, like on the big spud, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? What would you think about me as a rabbi? I'm not doing his rabbi job, right? Okay. But if you saw me judging us negatively, you'd be like, okay, that's what we do. The Torah actually is saying they're both the same. We're equating them. Very unusual. Now, we're going to look at a lot of topics. We're, not going to we're going to look at Lush and Hora. We're going to look at anger. I'm going to spend a lot of time on these topics this semester. What I want to just share with you is that it seems as though the Torah seems to put them on level footing one with the other. Okay. Let us see another commentator. Let's try to unravel this some more, shall we? We're on page three, note three. Do you have a book? No, I'm good. I have one. You have one? No, not yet. So come and take a book. Don't worry. Lara! Just a short question. So basically, understanding Rashi is saying that only if the deed that we're talking about that the person is doing is something that is in the realm of reasonable, like, that it's... That, I mean, that's what Shani pointed out in the words. Yachol Achrio. Yachol Achrio. Now, we haven't spoken about who the person is. We're going to see that we're going to see a difference between different types of people. Okay? We're going to see some people are just good people we see doing a bad thing. There could be some bad, bad people who do a bad thing. Right? So it depends. It depends who. It's going to depend when. It's going to depend why. What they were doing. There's going to be a lot of features over here. But, so, but Rashi has summed it all up, but we're going to have to unpack this Rashi to figure it out. And it really, Shani did a good job. Yachol Are you able to do it? Sometimes I just can't do it. It's just, it's just too bad. You know what I'm saying? You're running out of bank shooting people. I just, I'm like, no, I'm not going to call the police because I don't want to judge him wrongly. You're crazy? I think Russia wouldn't call a cop if he saw what I mean. We had phones in those days, a thousand years ago, <laughs> Troy and France. But would it be sh like, okay, you call the cop, you can report people. So it can't, it's got to be a limit. We've got to figure out the get out. Just like you have to work out whether a piece of animal is kosher, and you've got to figure out where it fell in and what it got mixed up, we go into great details. And if a Torah is kosher, right, is enough letters and the right letters, and a mezuzah is kosher, is it on the right door, the right way, written the right way, and whether a person is keeping Shabbat or not, the laws of Shabbat, we have to figure this out as well. So it's like, oh, be nice to people. No, no, no. It's not, you've got to figure it out. You've got to work it out. We've got to, we're going to work out the system. Okay, let's have a look at the Sefer Chenach. The Sefer Chana we said was written about a thousand years ago. We're not sure exactly who wrote it, um, but we know Rai wrote it. He had a son who kept asking him questions, and he wanted to answer all his questions for the reason behind mitzvot. So he lists his book by Torah portions. Okay. So you go to Bereshit, there's a few mitzvot there, not too many. And then as we get closer to where we are over here, it really fills up. Okay. So we're on mitzvah 235 out of. Good. 613. Very good. Ah, that's a good question. Is it part of the 248365? Is it a positive or negative? That's an interesting question. Is this a mitzvah ase? You have to judge people favorably. Or a mitzvah lot ase? You shouldn't judge negatively. You think it's an ase? Let's have a look. Could it be both? Um, it's got to fit one or the other. You could have one mitzvah that has different parts to it that is both, like Passover has mitzvah you have to do, like he did in the Okay, you read the Haggadah. And then you can't eat chametz. So Pesach falls on it. But usually it falls within one or the other. Let's have a look. So the Sefer Chenech Mitzvah 235, and he's listing it. So this is one of the 613 mitzvot. Lishpat B'Tzedek, says the Chenech. And he explains. Oba Pirushin Tztavu Adayim Lila Shpat Balei Yeriv. There is a mitzvah to judge with righteousness, which means treating litigants fairly and equally. Okay, that was one interpretation. Remember that, guys? He says, V'od yesh beklal mitzvah zu. There's another aspect of this mitzvah. So the number one is litigants in the court of law, which means he's speaking to 
the Bet Din, the three judges who sit at a court of law, and they're going to have to make a judgment. Okay, we did that already. But how about the rest of us? Does this mitzvah apply to me? And he's like, actually, it does. Let's have a look at the words. Mitzvah zu sheraui. What does the word raui mean? Write the words down in English underneath if you do not know them. Sheraui, yeah. Probably rotten, like rotten or like bad or spoiled. Fitting, yeah, rotten, that's with an iron. That's a ra with an iron. This is ra'oi, it's fitting. It's fitting, it's a right thing to do. It's a ra'oi. Nachan, it's fitting. Lakol adam. Hmm. What's lakol adam? Everybody. Everybody. Every human. Adam refers to humans in general. Man, woman, child. Ledonat chaveir, lakafzcha, to judge their fellow favorably. Don't interpret their actions or their words. Now that's going to be interesting. He's added another aspect over here. What they say, how they talk to you, except for the good. Except for the good. Am I meant to walk around, someone cursed me, I've been like, oh, such a good person. Who are we talking about? There's one key word we haven't really focused on. What key word did we miss out? Who are we talking about over here? Look inside the verse. Who are we talking about? In the English, it's not so good. In the Hebrew, it's there. Le chavero. What's chavero? Ah, now one second. Hey, am I your friend? You're my rabbi. I'm a rabbi. That is also true. <laughs> but I can be a rabbi and still be your friend. Yeah. We can have a friendly relationship. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. I think you're my friend. So we're talking about that. So I'm, I'll be included in this? Yeah. Okay, fine. How about Shani? Is she a friend? Yeah. Okay. Do you hang out with her sometimes? No. Not so but much. I see her here. But you see her here. So she's your friend. You like friendly towards her. Mm -hmm. But if I find some random person on the street, are they your friend? No. Acquaintance, maybe, but not friends. Possibly acquaintance. But a stranger? Yeah. No. no. We're not talking about that person. We're talking about some, just for the words themselves, right? We're talking about someone that acts like your friend. That's friendly towards you. Not some random person on the street. It could be an acquaintance. Maybe, if you're a very great person, we're talking about a random person you've never met before. But that's not what it says. He says, We're talking about someone who, just the words of, who kind of hang out with you, and they're like in your realm of acquaintance. Some of chibor. Maybe we can go even further and say part of your people. Maybe we can say part of your community. You know them. There's a, there's a chibor connection. There's some kind of connection between you. Are they your bestie? Are they your BFF? It doesn't say that. It doesn't say BFF. It doesn't say base, fe, fe. Right? BFF, right? It says chaveiro. <laughs> Emily Okin. Let's make a scenario for you, just based on what we said so far. You're in the elevator at Stern College. Now, as we know, there's always one elevator that's broken, and the other two are always packed. Okay, that's just the general rule when it comes to the elevators here at Stern College. Okay? And actually, let's say it this way. You're actually outside the elevator, trying to get in, and there's room for one more. There's a little space. A little Emily Oaken to get in because she's late for class, which you're never are late for class, which I'm using you as the example because you're always on time. The doors open, you start to make your way in, and then you see the doors close before you're actually inside, and they start to close. You're like, excuse me, could you hold the door open? And this happens all the time. And the, there's a girl inside, and she's next to it, and you see it ignoring you. And she's the one who's got to do the door open button and just press it and the doors close. You don't know the girl, you never met her before. She's, we assume, a student here at Stern. What is your obligation according to Rashi, the, Gema, the Pasuk, the Gemara, the Rashi, and the Sefer Khan? What's your obligation over here? Do you have an obligation? Yeah, I should judge her favorably. I should try to justify her action in a way. Maybe she's listening to music, maybe she's hard of hearing. I shouldn't go assuming she's a bad person because she didn't open the door for Says me. Emily Okin, I have an obligation over here. I have an obligation, according to the verse over here, that I have to create some kind of scenario in my head which could well be complete bobkas, narishkeit, nonsense. 
but I'm expected in my head, according to these before Hashem, to make something. And he gave some interesting ones. Maybe she's deaf. Maybe she never heard you. So I would say thanks, peep. And if she never heard me, so she wouldn't hear this one. Shani would curse her out. So everyone has, everyone has their own way of dealing with the situation. No, but if she if she didn't hear, like if she didn't hear, she would. Like, let's put it. Let's put it there. First of all, is she? Would she? Would you put her under the category of chavero? Before this happened, <laughs> maybe not after. Okay. Before this happened, are you prepared to put her in the category of chavero? Yeah, she, yeah, she's a part of our community. She's part of what community is that? Okay, fine. So she's part of your community. You are considered to be chavero. So this is kicking in. This whole thing is kicking in. Okay? Not some random person on the street that smacks you in the face. Okay. Fine. And she didn't smack you in the face. Okay, but she upset you, made you late, and all the rest of it. It's very irritating. You're a liar. I am? Yeah. Why you made some I random example in your head, which is a lie. She's deaf. You know what? She's not. She had her headphones on. She never had headphones on. Why are you doing that? Are you expected to do that? Shouldn't you try to see the good in people so you don't go hating humanity? Should you find... saying something good. Let's slow down. Should you find the good in people as a not-hate humanity? Now you get into the reasons of why we're doing this. That we're going to get to. That we're going to get to. And the answer is, yes, you're not a liar. You're not insane. You're expected to do this. You're expected to find yachol, a possibility. It could be remote. It could be she's in a really bad... You ever those bad days you wake up and like... It could be you're expected to find something, as you Americans say, from left field. Bring it and be like, I'm going to apply this possibility over here. It's remote. It's really remote. Because I don't think she's deaf. Because I've seen her around schmooze with the people, but maybe she is. It looks like she was smiling, but maybe she's having a really <coughs> bad day. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't take it. Personally. Personally. Now that seems to be where we're going with this whole situation. Okay. Yes! I have a, like what if a friend actually does like a personal like attack on you? Beautiful. Let's say a friend does a personal attack on you. Are you expected to allow this to fall inside there as well? So we're going to see the answer seems to be you're expected to still do this. But we're going to see other mitzvot as the classes go by that you are still expected to tell someone that does something not nice to you and speak to them and tell them. It could be that Emily, after the fact, when she sees this girl again later, be like, by the way, you didn't hold the door open for me. You know, that upset me a little bit. We're going to see that, according to the Rambam, is actually a mitzvah. You're going to tell them. You're going to speak to them. Never in public. Never to embarrass them. But you're actually expected to do that. Once again. This is the same Torah that says keep Shabbat and keep... And all the other mitzvot that we get obsessed with, which are very, very important mitzvot, the same Torah is saying, judge the person favorably. Give her or him the benefit of the doubt. Okay, let's go further. Let's go further. So let's pull back just a little bit. Are you with me so far? Any questions so far? Are we clear? Because we're going much, much further into this and into other topics. It's all going to come back to this. Yes. Just like a clarifying question. Is this related to the um, Asana, so like controlling your actions, so you control your character? Absolutely. Oh, 100%, Leo. 100%. This is all about controlling our actions in order to control our character. Ultimately, we're doing this for ourselves. Because she doesn't even know I'm judging her. Right? People are having a fight. They don't even know I saw. And yet I'm still expected. This is all about what's going on in my head. The Torah wants you to control your head. Really, we're going to see the Torah wants you to do that so that you don't act out upon it. By, we'll see, taking revenge, bearing a grudge, hating, and all the other things, and talking Lashon Hara, speaking bad speech. It's all going to come out of this. So ultimately, all of this is going to be so that you don't do something about it. But it always starts in your head, isn't it? Before you speak bad about someone, it's starting in your head. Before you hit someone, start, before you insult someone, it's all starting here. The Torah is saying, before you get out there, start. if you can fix the head thing, then you're going to control the anger, you're going to control the Lashon Hara, you're going to control the violence, you're going to control the revenge, the bearing the grudge, all the topics we're going to look at this semester. Yeah. 
What does a person do if they can't convince themselves to see the best in people? No matter how hard they try, you just... It's see tough. That anyway. question's a fair question, but it's going to be the same thing. What if a person can't control their anger? We're going to spend three or four classes on the topic of anger. Anybody here have anger problems? Anybody? Nah, you're a peaceful bunch. Right? It's tough. It's not easy, by the way. One day of this, one day of really doing this is harder than a hundred Yom Kippur's. One day of this, all this stuff, is harder than conquering a city. That's what it says. Than a hundred Yom Kippur's. I'm telling you. This is the, the meat of Judaism. This Beit al Machavero. This is what it's all about. Yom Kippur, I don't eat. I've got a shawl. I read the stuff. Brrr, you know? Just go when you go when you go out. Check in, check out. This you gotta figure out. People irritate you, they upset you, they emotionally abuse you. But I have a great technique I'll give you next class, remind me. A fantastic technique. Yeah, yeah, hand up one second. Yeah? Oh no. Oh. Okay, um, just a follow-up question. Remember when you said you talk to the person? They did you. you are. We're going to see that later on. We haven't seen that yet. We're going to see the rum. We're going to bring down. You're obligated to talk to a person calmly, without anger, which could be a few days later, or a week later, or a month later. Depends how angry you are, and you get have to say to them, "Why did you do that to me?" Is, is that is that also for yourself, or is that for to improve other persons? They have to improve both. It could improve them. Maybe you won't. Maybe they'll hate you for it. The obligation is for you to do it. For yourself. For yourself. So that you don't hate them and want to take revenge against them. You can just take a step back. Take a step back. You, you, I say I was going to do that? No, I'm saying you, you just can take a step back. What does that mean? I mean, you don't have to confront them. But you're still upset with them. Every time that Emily sees that girl who slow cl cl close the door on her, she's going to go off, she's the elevator closer in my face. Mm -hmm. Hello? But she's not What's up with her? But if she's not yeah. going to say to anyone, it's not Lashon Arash. That's true. It's not Lashon Arash. It doesn't say anything to anyone. But she's still bearing a grudge against her. And she may take revenge against her. She could be somewhere else a little bit later. And this girl wants to get in the elevator, and she's like, see ya, beep. Perfect. It could be she, it could be she, what? Why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you do that? Yeah, Great question, she did it to me, I'd do it to her. I do that. So the, Emily would never do that. But the answer is, you're not allowed to do that. That's taking revenge. But and that it's itself, I'm saying that's a prohibition in the Torah. I know, I know you want to do it, right? Because they hit me, so I hit them back. <laughs> right? But then, what's going to happen to society? It's just to bring it up. Everyone's going to be slapping everyone! Wait, so which everyone does anyway, so what's the difference? An yeah. eye for an eye is just a Christian book. Oh, very, very good. Eye for an eye. How does that fit in over here? Very, very good. That's not a Christian thing. It comes with the Torah. The okay, Bible. I just want to make sure. The Bible. The Bible, right? The Torah yeah. says very clearly, you stick an eye for an eye. And a tooth for a tooth. And hand for an hand. Ooh. That is financial. Oh, what? Yeah, they said like... That's also not, that's not a Jewish thing. No, turn I said, the that's what I said. I said the Christian, Christian Bible. Christian Bible says turn the that's not a Jewish thing. Really? When, they said, when they said that to Jews, they turn the other cheek, you have to slap it on the other side, right? <laughs> um, no. That is purely financial. That means if someone takes $1,000 from you, you let go to the court of law, take the money back. How do we know that that's financial? Though? Come to, first of all, there's never been a time in history where you put people's eyes out. Never in the history of the world. And the Gemara tells us. We have an oral Torah that says this is purely my mom. Rush says that. All the conversation talk about it. You never met a chop person's hand off for cutting your hand. Never, never, never in Jewish history, ever in any court of law, have they said take an eye out. It's the value of an eye. The person takes an eye out, the value of an eye. Just like an American law. Yeah. Right? What's the value of an eye to this person versus that person? What's the value of this person's hand if they get injured? And how much conversation do they have? Purely financial. So just other sides interpret that differently? Other, yeah, not Jewish ones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Funnily enough, they do. Not a Jewish concept whatsoever. That's good to know. Yeah, that is good to know. Everything I'm teaching is good to know, I think. <laughs> yes, and then yes. Um, whenever you said before that it's only based on those like you're friends with, so in the other case that you were saying with the rabbi, then if that's a complete stranger, I'm confused. Then you're not expected to do it. You're, you're not expected you're not, to No, you call the cops and say, there's a robbery in process. I mean, if it was that clear, but meaning if it was, there could be, like, he could be guilty, he could be not, are you supposed to judge fairly? We're going to see. It's, it's, there's a lot more. It could well be that if this person could do damage to other people, and then you're obligated to protect other people. If this person is speaking Lashon about other people, you gotta stop them. Let's say this person is acting mean to other people or they're hurting other people, then it could be, you've gotta figure it, you've gotta judge. You've got to be a judge, like a judge in a court of law. This is what Jews are meant to do. Meaning, but it's not solely based on just judging your friends fairly. You've gotta figure out, yeah, you've gotta figure out if this person's gonna hurt your friend. Yeah. 
Yeah, you gotta use your brains for this one, yeah. What if you don't consider the person in the elevator a friend? So that's the question. Are they part of your community? Are they, they don't have to be your, again, your best friend, but they could be a friend one day. Or maybe part of this community, part of the Jewish community, part of the world community, it could well be. And you know something funny? In the end, we're gonna see this is important. It ain't so much about them, it's about you. In your head, you can't walk around the whole time thinking, this person's bad, I'll take revenge against them, revenge against them, revenge against them, revenge against them, revenge against them. Because it's not good for you. You're carrying too much with you. That could be one of the reasons the Torah is advocating this. Okay, let's step back. Now, turn over the page, let's do page four. But if you know someone did something bad, you have to... You've got to do something about it. You've got to do something no, about I'm it. No, I'm saying to you. You're expected, to, say... rough, you're expected to do something about it. If they did something bad to you... No, let's just say someone lied to you. Oh, your okay. friend lied. Yes. I mean, a friend. Okay. A friend lied to you. Yes. Are you obligated to, to forgive? You are obligated to go up to that person who lied to you and say, I want to judge you favorably. I want to believe it's nothing. And it could usually, in most cases, people do bad stuff to you. People ignore you in the cafeteria. Most of the small stuff that we, they're just having a bad day and they didn't hear you. You know? I'll give you an example. I'll give me one story. One second, Jordan. I'll give you a story on this one. I had a friend who called me up with a message on my machine and he's like, leaves very long messages. Long message lever, you know? Hello, Rabbi. It's me, Steve. I want, oh, once I have call waiting. I'm back. Like, you know these people? And I go oh on God. and on and on, you know people? So I, I, I go, okay, fine, I'll call them back. I can't, I don't have time to listen to the whole message. Delete. So a few weeks later, didn't talk to me. He's ignoring me. He's nasty. I kept being like cold towards me. I don't understand why. He says to me, it's adventure. I said, something's going on over here. I went over to him. He says, "Everything okay?" He's like, "What do you care?" Like, Much something like that. Like, was... so I said, what, "What do you mean? What's going on?" He goes, "Why didn't you come?" I said, "Come where?" He says, "My son was being bar mitzvah. I had to do the kiddush on Shabbat in my shul." It's like, "No, you didn't." He goes, "Yes, I did." I said, "When?" He goes, "I left a message for you." I'm like, "Oh, that message." I'm like, "It's a five-minute message, right? It was erev Shabbat." And I didn't have time to listen to the whole thing. And it's the first minute. I thought, I'll call you back, Moshe Shabbat. I'll call you back Saturday night and finish with it. You know? So I didn't even know what I was doing. You make a mistake. I should listen to the entire message. You should keep showing messages. You speak to me. You say, why did you do that to me? You figure it out. Because you came to him. Okay. Because I saw him acting that way. He had an obligation to come to me. Probably, yeah. That's his thing. But I'm talking about my obligation. What was my fear? What was my obligation at that time? So you just let him be like that to me? No. In most cases, you speak to people, they lie to you, speak to them, and they do something to you, and you're like, why should this be? You have to go up to them. You're obligated. And we're jumping ahead a little bit, but it's good, so you, you'll appreciate this information more. To go up to this person and say, why should you do that to me? That's the, that's the words of the, of the Rambam. In the Mishnah, in, in the law book. Not easy, is it? It's tough, this, isn't it? It's not a Jews, it's like, difficult, yeah. Do you have the obligation to judge someone favorably, like, even if you really don't consider them your friend, like like with me with these So we're gonna we're gonna come to that. It's 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 gonna be it's gonna be some gray area. It depends it depends on the person, depends on yourself. Different people are different. Some people are able to do it to everyone. Some it's very very difficult. It's a high level. Different different levels over here. Some righteous people are able to do it for everyone. Personally, I'm not there. I can barely do it for my family, right, and the people around me, but. It's a process. Okay, right after these words that we saw, okay, it says a few pasukim later that you should love your fellow like you love yourself. Now we're going to focus on those and that verse a lot. You have to love your neighbor like you love yourself. Who this is talking about? How you might love them? What's involved in all this? We're going to see as the semester goes by. But let's just connect to this topic for one second. If you look at note one on top, it says, well, mitzvah ase, there is a positive mitzvah, as Rebecca pointed out, shall betzeret tishvah mitzvah, you should judge your neighbor favorably. It's mitzvah ase. You shake a lulav, mitzvah ase. You keep Shabbat, mitzvah ase. All right, you light candles, you hear the shofar, it's like, 
This is also Mitzvah Sase. Same Torah, same way. You've got to try to judge your chavero favorably in every situation. That your friend does. He, Taluya, this verse is connected. Taluya, it's Taluya. the mitzvah asay to another mitzvah, which is Shel Vihatarech Kamocha. Three Pesukim later, you should love others like you love yourself. He's like, this idea does not stand on its own, Emily. It's connected to another verse that appears right after it. And that is to love other people like you love yourself. Now, we're not sure exactly what the verse is talking about yet. We will, believe me. But just on the face of it, it's saying, you know, when you judge other people favorably, you're doing something important. You're trying to love them. Because if you judge them negatively, you're going to hate them. And the Torah is not wanting to hate other people. He carries on. He says it's very, very clear. That if you judge your favor, your, your friend negatively, even once. He's talking about, now he's talking about the results of this. Shuv. You can have a problem. Once you to judge people negatively, not only messing up over here, what you're going to start doing is you're going to start not loving that person, hating them. And that's a problem of itself. Right now, and completely, you're going to miss out on this important mitzvah. So he's telling you the consequences of this. What's the consequence? If you start to not judge favorably, you're going to start to hate people, and you start to hate your friends, you're missing out on another mitzvah, which is you're going to love other people like you love yourself. Okay, you've seen the connection over here. So one second. Wait a minute. Just on the surface, Shane, just on the surface of this, we say something very interesting. If you judge that person, that elevator favorably, Emily, you know what's going on? You're doing two Torah mitzvot. Number one, you judge them favorably. The cover of the Chaveira, the Kaf Schut. Two, you're loving that person like you love yourself. Suddenly we've got two mitzvot for one. And we're going to see this idea repeat itself, that if you do some of these mitzvot positively, you actually end up with five, six, seven, eight positive mitzvot. And if you speak lush and hurrah against the person, you know that girl? You know that girl, Rachel, right? That was in the elevator, goes on, and you start to speak bad about her. You speak lush and hurrah about her, even though it's true, we're going to see, because she did close the door on you. And you're going to speak smack about her. And suddenly we're going to see, you're going to hate a person, you're not going to love them. You end up transgressing six, seven, eight, nine, twelve, fifty. The Chavos is going to say tons of uh, negative mitzvot. That's not one rack of pig. It's twenty. It's going to compound. It's all connected. It's a holistic whole. He's just threw in another one. How else do we see this? Look at note two. We'll finish in a few minutes. He says, Im yesh ava ben el He's like, you know, it works both ways. If you have ava love between you and another person, let's start from that point. If Shani thinks, you know what, I'm going to love everyone here. By the way, how do you define that love here to see? Does that mean you have to hug everyone the whole time? You have to be everyone's best friend all the time? We're going to figure that out. But assuming that you can love other people, Imish Abba bin Lachavero, he says, this is the Sicha Chocham Musar, Ava Amitit, a real Ava, not a fake love, but a real thing. Ka'ava ta Avla Beno, like a father to a child or a mother to a child. As Bamamela, Ubateva, or Badla Tova. You see, what's going to happen is, if Kayla loves her friend, no matter what that friend does to her, what's she going to do? Judge her favorably because it can't be she's a good person. I love her, 
and she cursed me out, or she was mean to me, or she didn't return my phone call, but I'm gonna judge her favorably. So now it's a two-way street. If you love people, you're gonna judge them favorably. And not only that, if you judge people favorably, you're gonna end up loving them. It's boop, boop, both ways. And that's the general outlook you're gonna have. And look, he's gonna say something amazing now. Virakol, the Dhamma Kolokov, you're gonna judge everyone favorably. That's gonna be your general position in life. Kayla's like, nah, I can't believe something. That person would do something, can't be. Can't be that girl Rachel or something back. She's such a nice guy, it can't be. It can't be. You know what? I can't believe it. She's always so nice to me. How can it be they did such a terrible can't be? I'm not, I'm not. They, they're rude to me, they're having a bad day. You'll naturally become such a person. Im came, nim sat the mitzvah of Sev Tishmatecha. If so, this mitzvah of with righteousness you should judge your fellow. Have I done a call of them? So you're going to judge everyone favorably. He totsa mi mitzvah. You'll see it comes out of. It's the it's the totsa. Um, it's the inevitable outcome of the avrecha kamocha. Or mid the kafschot he bemet siman. And this way of judging favorably actually is a sign that you love other people. How do you know if you're a lover, not a hater? How do you know if you're a lover and not a hater? You judge people favorably. favorably. That's actually the sign of it. How do we know if Shani respects me? Because if I do something bad, she's going to judge me favorably. That's a sign that we have a healthy love relationship, which you're expected to have. We're going to stomp over there. Any questions, thoughts, comments? By the way, this semester will change you, even if you don't agree with half the stuff you're listening to over here, more than you realize. Yes, Emily. What if someone's been your good friend and you've judged them favorably all your life, and then they end up stabbing you in the back? And it's like irrefutable that they stabbed you in the back and that they did something bad. Very, very good. You're not expected to be a doormat. If someone keeps being bad to you and keeps hurting you, you're not expected to be a doormat. You're expected to do something about it. Do something about it. Most cases of life, though, are not people. 99% of life, I believe, for most people, is just not that. Most of life is people who just go about their lives, are okay to you, do things which you may not like, and you've got to judge in this way. Got it? Thank you so much. You saw the video, so thank you so much. All right.